Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cats About Town, TVC 22 in Clarence, Rockland. Today we are announcing summertime, springtime, summertime, and we're all going to be moving outdoors and enjoying festivals and music. And man, do we have a lot of wonderful musicians in this part of the world. Not only are we Franco Ontario and everybody is bilingual, but we have some amazing musical talent. And in this case, we are talking to Eric. Michael Hawk, who is not only a wonderful musical talent, but also an organizer who is bringing us a week-long festival to Clarence Creek. Eric, welcome and thank you for your effort. Right. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here. Now, well, things are still reasonably quiet, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a lot of work that you've put yourself into and a big shift for a musician. What gave you the idea? First of all, tell us, what kind of musical instruments do you play? Um, started uh, off as a drummer and eventually moved up to the guitar, started singing, and uh, I've been doing it ever since, okay. since I was 14, 15 okay. years old. And always country? Rock and roll at first, and then uh, I found my passion, country music. Yeah, and where did you acquire that? Here in the area, or did you get an influence elsewhere? Um, probably playing the bars when I was really young. Um, it was always present. Um, family. Um, I just found it. You just found it? I just found it. It needed to be with you. Yeah. And then you decided that you were going to spread it to everybody and that brought a whole new different dimension. That's right. That's a big job organizing a festival like this. When did you get that idea? Um, a member of my band, um, Daniel Boileau, he's the organizer for the Terso, Tersoa Music. Mm -hmm. another festival and he's got a, a lot of baggage when it comes to um, actually putting on these uh, festivals um, so I've been organizing my own shows and promoting my own shows um, hiring different artists so um, I don't know I just said you know what I'm gonna give it a shot Give it a shot. Yeah. What's the worst that Why can not? happen? Well, you've invited quite a long list of amazing people. Yeah. And you are well known in the industry then. Well, not really. Just because Clarence Creek is not well known <laughs> anywhere, I think. <laughs> yeah, but when you look at all the, the festival, because we're part of an organization, there's about 70 uh, country music festivals in the organization. They're all basically 80% in small villages, just like Clarence Creek. I don't know. I don't know if it's the setting, the country setting, yeah. away from the city, but but it but it works. But so we'll you, see in the summer. We will see. But certainly, you've organized something that's outdoors. Describe it a little bit. What was your main idea for doing um, this? I just love the music, mm -hmm. and I was born in Clarence Creek, and I still live here. And um, I don't know. I just thought you know it would be nice to bring that passion to Clarence Rockland. I've been talking with the city, the mayor, and the councillors, and uh, the staff, and they all agreed, you know, it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. So they're really b behind the idea. Mm -hmm. And I just started picking up the phone and calling some people and talking to people from the area. They all love the idea, so I said, you know what, let's do it. Well, country music is, even if you don't know it, like me, I have to show my age. I know Willie Nelson, I know Kenny Rogers, I know Dolly Parton. and that's Dolly who? Much. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, don't knock it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen her before in concert. Oh, yeah, okay. A lot of good talents. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all very engaging. It really makes you feel a lot. It makes you soulful. And to have it under, under the stars or under the sun just adds that much to it rather than in the concert hall. Yeah. So... Um, you have to worry about the weather, what's your yeah. contingency plan? But the, the festival itself will not be outside, it's inside the arena. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. People will be able to camp, bring okay. their, their trailers and they can park on the outskirts of the, the arena. Okay. Um, but the show will be inside the arena. Because I know if I bring a tent mm -hmm. for a concert, mm -hmm. guaranteed it's going to rain. Yeah. There's going to be lightning. That's how yeah. lucky I am. So, okay, yeah. okay. Well, I guess when you're a musician, also an artist of any kind, you have to be superstitious. Yeah. There are signs and there are things to expect. And after so many years in the industry, I guess it's all happened. Yeah. Yes. Very often. <laughs> Don't want anyone electrocuted. No, that's it. And the show must go on. So the arena's safer, yeah. get drier. So we'll, we'll good do for it. you. Yeah. Good for you. 
tents, but people will be able to bring their tents and camp out. And yep. No fee for that. Well, just it's the entrance fee. It's all part of the yeah of the entrance fee, which is a uh, fifty-five dollars pre-sale, mm -hmm. and then it's sixty dollars, and that's for the whole week. You got a lot of good artists. Okay. Um, I think it's a uh, good value, and you're going to have a lot of fun. So tell us a little bit about this headliner of yours here, Georgette Jones. Yeah, I called up um, Dr. Murray. He was Vern Gosden. I don't know if you know Vern Gosden. He was a good country singer. He passed away, and uh, now he's managing Georgette Jones. So I called him up, and uh, she was available. So she agreed to come from Nashville and come down to Clarence Creek to do a show on uh, July 22nd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you have to pay for their arrangements, I for do. their flights? You do. Yeah. Okay, folks, so $55 for a week, I think, with this young man having made this huge effort to bring this, how many stars are there here? Like, say, 20, 30 of them? Oh, more than that, because this that? list is not even complete. Okay, yeah. so let's make the effort and show him our appreciation and show up. Buy a ticket, even if you're not going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a lot of uh, local talents, um, people from the Quebec side, the Ontario side, from New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. So. It's going to be bilingual, my friend. Oh, good. English. You know, good. I'm trying to make everybody happy, mm -hmm. but it's all going to be country music. So it's going to be from noon till late at night, or just in the evening. On the Thursday, it's going to be um, seven o'clock until midnight, mm -hmm. and then the music's going to start like on the weekend from one until midnight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's going through until the following week, so straight through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, we're um, we're gonna have a bingo. The music actually starts on the Thursday, but okay. we're gonna have a bingo during the week, and we're right. looking at having other activities also during the week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hats off to you for making this effort. You're taking a huge chance. Are you going to be performing too? I will on uh, on the Sunday. On the Sunday, what yeah. time? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the Sunday we're going to do something different. We're going to have a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have fifteen-minute segments with every artist to showcase a lot of the people, the artists from around here, from Ottawa, um, and that day is dedicated to the '60s and '70s country music. I call oh, that, I'll feel comfortable there, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so kind of the golden era of country music. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we got a lot of artists uh, All right. planned out for the Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're going to be playing some of your music on the show. All Not right. here, unfortunately. I don't get to enjoy it, but I'm going to have to watch the show. <laughs> um, which, which of these people, do you know all of these people? You've, no, I don't. You don't? No. You just I, made cold calls. Yeah, um, but there are people I've, a lot of them I've done shows with before, and, or they were referred to me by others in the industry. Okay. Um, but yeah, most of these people I've seen or I've performed with in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's going to be great. Like uh, I can vouch for, for these artists. Uh, I'm trying to bring, you know, this is the first one. Yeah. I'm trying to bring good quality country music. Yeah, no. and the community is going to help you because that's what we do well, in Clarence Creek. Yeah. It's well, got to be that way. It can't be just one person's effort. So tell me, what is the, um, the rules on um, bringing in liquor? Because that's always part of country music, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, liquor, we're, we'll be selling the liquor. Actually, you know who's going to be selling the liquor? TBC Vendu. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out about that afterwards. Yeah, it's because um, the proceeds are going to go to help the station. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Smart. Smart yeah. partnership. Just like the bingo. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be calling the bingo. The Alliance Club is going to be calling the bingo. So and the I'm proceeds. trying to focus on the music and, you know, yeah. spread the wealth. It's not all about me. It's about everybody. I like that attitude. Do you have children? Yeah. Yes. A son and a daughter. Right. And um, I told my daughter as soon as I'm very busy with the festival and yeah. all the other shows I'm I'm doing. So I told my daughter, I'm not doing any shows in August. 
that's my break, and uh, we're going to go down to Memphis, Tennessee. Um, she's a big Elvis Presley fan. Oh, okay. So we're going to go see Graceland and Sun Records, uh, and um, that's my August. So oh, okay. if anyone's looking at me, they want to book me for August, no. I'm off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we're not going to interfere with family time. Yeah. Are they musicians too? My daughter, uh, she started, she, she came on stage with me maybe four or five months ago oh, and uh, what a feeling that must be yeah she played uh, Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash Wow, so, Johnny yeah. Cash I know him too okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. we do have uh, Johnny Cash impersonator coming down um, for the festival you know what he's probably the best I've seen I've done shows with him and we have other shows coming up together uh, he's the youngest impersonator in Canada Mm -hmm. to do uh, Johnny Cash and um, uh, I don't know if I can mention this but Ju uh, June 17th will be in Cornwall mm -hmm. and on the 18th in Ottawa and we're going to be playing with the original drummer of Johnny Cash W.S. Holland so whatever song you can think about of Johnny Cash this is the guy that's playing drum on those recordings so he's coming up from Jackson Tennessee to do these shows so um, okay but W.S. Holland will not be at the festival, but the Johnny Cash impersonator, Andy Vickers, will be here. Oh, wonderful. And we even have an Elvis Presley impersonator coming down, Stomping Tom Connors impersonator. Um, yeah, we're trying to do different things, right? Go back Diff in time yeah. to the nostalgic times. That's because, right. yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people who appreciate that. And really good music never loses its touch, never loses its effect. It, it's timeless. It seems like the kids, even the kids, they come back. You know, when the Johnny Cash movie came out, mm -hmm. you know, everyone flooded back to Johnny Cash and found those old recordings. And uh, actually, they're doing, uh, they're filming a movie for George Jones, uh, George at Jones' uh, father. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's going to bring a lot of the younger fans to the old music also. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing. It's really amazing. I imagine that all of your neighbors have already bought tickets. Not yet. They're you not know? for sale yet. They're not for I sale yet. Oh, when that. do they go on sale? That's an important thing to um, know. And where do we? Where do they go on sale? Um, probably in about a month, we'll have the bracelets for sale, okay. and um, we'll have them for sale on the website, which is uh, CR Country Jamboree at. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, we'll find it. We'll put it on the on the banner underneath, yeah. and um, so we need. A thousand people to show up for you to break even, at least. Let's round it off to fifty thousand, okay? Fifty thousand? Sure. All right. <laughs> Would be nice. <laughs> well, we'll certainly make an effort. And uh, what do you do about all the people who sit in their yards around the uh, the arena park and listen for free? Well, the doors are going to be closed. Um, they'll have to come in if they want to right. hear the music. Right, because the music is inside. I keep that, forgetting that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just dying to hear some of this because I think it's going to revive a lot of feelings. I, I know that there are some people who really do not like country music. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that I understand that. But I can certainly understand um, not reacting well to some of the angry music that we have mm -hmm. these days. That mm -hmm. the, because music really gets into your heart, gets into your soul, vibrates right through you. Yes. And country music, well, there's, there's a whole history to it. Yeah. Uh, and it's not meant to make people life. miserable. The good country music will talk about life and will engage people in their own lives in relationship with the music. And um, for an event like this, it's a, a lot about the people, not just the music, but it's about the people that comes together. When I do my shows, and um, I have a lot of evening of country music that I do, and um, mm -hmm. people, they just get together. Some people don't even like country music, but they know there's a bond, and they come in, and there's a party aspect to it, and uh, mm -hmm. everyone engages. And, uh, mm -hmm. So it's not just about the music. It's about the human aspect also. That's the most important thing. Yeah. The, that's the most important thing, bringing people together and letting them share and learn from each other. And 
hopefully walk out of there feeling a lot better than when they walked in. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, the country music, as in the rock and roll circuit, is a, is a rather brutal one. There's a, there's a lot of not pleasant stuff that goes on. How did you manage to survive that over the years? Um, I got older. <laughs> you got wiser. older? And wiser. <laughs> Um, At least you made it to get older. Yeah, <laughs> they don't all. Yeah, you know, um, I don't have the pressure to, that a lot of these guys have, like uh, let's say Willie Nelson or Chris Christopherson, because these guys are on the road. Well, back in the days, they were always on the road. And, um, um, but even for us, you know, when you play the bars and you play all these these places, you know, there's. Um, it's always floating around, but it's, you don't have to partake. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm happy having my glass of whiskey. Yes. And I'm happy with that. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll have to make sure that there's a... Fountain of youth. Yes. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> You're doing pretty well there for an 80-year-old, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of all of the um, musicians who've influenced you over the years, would mm -hmm. you care to mention a couple that... Um, Having Georgette Jones, Georgette on the show, she's um, George Jones' daughter and Temi Wynette's daughter. Mm -hmm. um, to me, George Jones is um, the king of country music. So having her on the show is very special. Um, I just love like Merle Haggard, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, went to see him many times. Um, Willie Nelson, uh, Johnny Cash. David Allen Cole, Johnny Paycheck, all these uh, these great singers, Hank Williams. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all part of the fabric of uh, what I am. And okay. um, basically, Waylon Jennings is the guy that really turned me on to the music. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I wear a ring with his emblem on it to kind of uh, remind me. Those are cool, some dazzling rings you've got there. Yeah. So that well, one's Waylon Jennings. Yeah. And what about that other thing? No, um, the other ones are just. Uh, Fancy. Fancy. <laughs> Keep your hands on your knees as opposed Let's to flying trying, around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so your instrument is the guitar? play guitar and I sing, yeah. And you can pretty much whip it out any time and just yeah. play a tune and yeah. walk into a bar anywhere and be the most popular guy around? Yeah, well, when I started out, it was basically um, just me and the guitar, the harmonica. So yeah. I just had to learn all these old folk songs and the old country songs and uh, I haven't done that in so long. Now I have a band and they kind of pick it up and I'm kind of lost without my band to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. But um, you know, but it's always fun in the summertime around the campfire, take out a guitar and uh, mm -hmm. you know. So as long yeah. as there's one person that listen, it really doesn't matter. Really? Yeah. So can you be found in any of the locals around here from time to time? Um, playing locally. Mm -hmm. um, once a year, I do a, a concert in Wendover, mm -hmm. um, an evening of country music, and we have different artists. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be playing April 29th in Bourget mm -hmm. um, with many different artists Fred Delorme, Marc André Lemieux, um, Sandy Sky, mm -hmm. Robert Guindon. Oh. Um, I got those two shows coming up. I told you about the Johnny mm -hmm. Cash shows uh, in June. Mm -hmm. I'll be playing the Wendover Country Music Festival um, July 15th mm -hmm. and uh, Festival Western de saint andre uh okay. July 29th. Okay. Yeah. So when you're not at one of those festivals, then you're just playing with family and friends. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're family and friends now, eh? Yeah. Okay. I should have brought my guitar. Right. <laughs> yes, you should have. <laughs> um, no, I play some of the bars, and uh, you know, people can call me, and I'm I'm easy. I just bring the guitar and just sing, you know. Oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. Um, you mentioned in Bur that you're going to be playing April 29th in Bourget. Where yeah. in Bourget? At the community center. At the community center yeah. for some special event, or they're um, just building it's it their second here? annual, um, and it's the um, Optimist Club that. Okay. Puts it together and they uh, they take the money. I think they they um, they had a splash pad going last year with the money they raised. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's going back to the community. So this is your community contribution. Kind of. 
One of the things I've noticed about the area is just that, that the community seems to come out and come together for a lot of wonderful causes. Mm -hmm. um, but always music adds a special yeah. dimension. They're very generous um, doing these shows in Wendover, like I was saying, you know, a lot of the businesses, they get involved and the people get involved and it's, uh, it's very wonderful to see. Uh, yeah. and, and that aspect helps me to put on a, a festival because I see there's involvement. I talk to, the, uh, to many people in the area and they're like, uh, we need more more festival, more activities. We, mm -hmm. we just need more as a, um, as a city, an expanding city. For sure we do, for sure. This whole area is really so special with, as I was mentioning earlier, the, the French dimension, the musical dimension, the rural dimension. There's, there's so mm -hmm. much that needs to be brought up and brought out to the world. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bringing out to the world, you, you must have recorded some albums during your I many did. years. I did. Um, in 2013, I recorded with Bobby Lalonde, mm -hmm. which is, uh, well, Bobby's a kind of a legend in these parts, a really good fiddle player, and uh, it was a, quite an honor recording with him and having some of the musicians on that session, musicians from uh, Patrick Norman's band, uh, Steve Petico on guitar, which will be at the festival, Steve. Mm -hmm. And then in 2014, I had the, um, opportunity to go to Nashville to record my uh, my album and um, that was great we recorded at the Sound Emporium recording studio um, that's the studio where they recorded uh, Kenny Rogers the Gambler or the soundtrack for Smokey and the Bandit um, a real piece of history mm. and uh, to be there with a lot of the musicians um, I had Michael Duchette on this session he was George Jones and Tammy Wynette's pedal steel guitar player. So sitting in the studio and hearing all those stories from the road and things I can't say on camera, mm -hmm. but um, no. you know, we had uh, Bob Seeger's uh, drummer on the session. We had uh, JT Cornflows from uh, um, Keith Urban's band. Um, just a lot of great people on uh, the album. and. Um, we threw it out there and it's on iTunes and it's doing really good. Like we're shipping these suckers all over the world. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So you're actually making some money out of this passion of yours. A little bit of money, but a then, little bit. <laughs> then it's out from one pocket, out the other. And, uh, yeah, that's yeah, well, kind of that's the way it goes, but <laughs> I enjoy it. It's, uh, but yeah, it's fueling itself. So I'm happy with that. Good. Now, when I was in Nashville many, many years ago, I, I know that there was some kind of a festival going on, and as soon as evening started to come in, then mm -hmm. all of a sudden these hats and boots appeared everywhere on the street. That's, is that something that's going to be at this festival? You're expecting everyone to show up with their hats and boots? And oh, they better. They, they better. better. It's all part of it, eh? Yeah, and uh, if the mayor's listening, I want him to put on some boots and uh, at least a hat. At oh, hat. his hat, no problem, yeah. I'm sure. We love that. <laughs> He's got a great hat. <laughs> Everybody knows him. All right. Yeah. So maybe there'll be some hat vendors too. Yeah, we're looking into that and uh, it's all coming together. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a little section for the people who, who wants to do some line dancing or two steps or whatever. <gasps> oh, they do. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, because we've all kind of lost the, uh, that, what, what do you call it? practice the the gift the mm -hmm. nobody nobody knows how to dance like that anymore no and unless it's they good do it in we, a group because when you go see a concert you know you just sit down and you watch the concert but mm -hmm. this is different um people can bring their chairs like if you, um, the campers like uh, they'll bring their own chairs or there'll be a place where you can stand a place where you can drink a place where you can uh, dance yeah. eat you know it's uh, yeah. not just to sit down and listen you know, no, can, a lot of stuff to do. You gotta move. You gotta yeah. be part of the music. Stomp your feet and help yeah. the musicians a bit. That's it. <laughs> I l I'm really loving it. I look. I so look forward to this. You're going to be. Um, do you need volunteers for this? Do you need people to help drive? Yes. And yes. Yes. People right. are. A lot of people are showing interest. Um, mm -hmm. um, when the re the website is uh, up and running, we're gonna have a link for people to. Uh, you know, to not apply, but just uh, show interest and yeah. uh, we'll call them up. But I already have a good um, 
bunch of people that follows me and they want to help and uh, so that's always uh, welcoming. Okay. Because so, yeah. you're going to need to find places to billet these musicians and drive them to and fro the airport because they mm -hmm. are VIPs so they need to be treated special. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, what's special for yeah. a country and western singer yeah. might and be different for... <laughs> you know, there's security, there's uh, yeah. you know, the garbages, you know, the smallest aspect has to be dealt with. Absolutely. Nothing can be overlooked. No. 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 But, you know, with my experience, you know, it's uh, with all the shows I do, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's a country music thing, but people are always ready to lend a hand. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see. So all these things put together makes me want to do a country music festival. Uh, yeah. That sounds wonderful. So tell me, when is your website going to go up? I don't know how the timing is of when the show is going to be aired, but hopefully it'll be before or yeah, after well, so that you're already up and running. Give it a week. Another week? Yeah. Okay, you're going to beat us to it. So All by right. the time you see this show, the website will be up, and you'll be able to go there and volunteer your time and get involved, like yeah, a proper community is supposed to do. And they can see all the artists that will be on the show and uh, biographies and uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of see what's going to go on. Because uh, we're even, well, there's going to be a demolition derby at the festival. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, uh, we're looking into bringing a, a car show. Mm -hmm. uh, even a theater uh, thing coming down, so... Uh, a theater thing? Uh, you mean there's going to be movies? Um, no, like a... En français? Pièce de théâtre. Oh, a, sh a play? A play. Okay, yeah. theater thing. Yeah, theater thing. It's a play. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so it's all coming together, so all the information that all people right. want will be on the website when it's uh, up and running. Okay. Well, that sounds wonderful. Eric? Yes? Bon courage, and thank you for doing all of this. Well, thank you very much. Bringing some life to the community. Yeah. Little Clarence Creek will never be the same again. <laughs> That's it. We'll put it on the map, I tell you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and everybody will be coming to your place to get some country music lessons. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's another interview. <laughs> that's another interview. Okay. <laughs> all right, my friend. Thank See you, you very soon. much. Bye-bye. There you go. Clarence Creek. July 18th to 23rd. Put it on your calendar and check the website and give it a hand and we'll all come together as a community in this wonderful part of the world of Clarence Rockland. See you next time. And welcome back. We have now a little bit of a change here. The um, guy with the hat and the beard is gone, and we have this beautiful young lady, Eloise Yell, also a local gal, 16 years old and an amazing musician, but then again, she comes by it naturally. She comes from a very musical family of Arcanson. Welcome, Eloise. And I want to warn the listeners that this is her first TV interview in English. She's a little bit nervous, but I say she's got no reason to be nervous because she's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so, Eloise, you have um, made quite a name for yourself already at this tender age of 16. You've been singing for how many years? I've been singing in public since 
I was seven, so about nine years, I'd say. Nine years, and yeah. you, but you didn't start out singing. You started out with musical instruments with your yes, family, I is was, that right? Yeah, I was playing uh, violin, the violin in um, the group uh, Arcanson. All right, and do you still play with them? Yes, of course. Yes, I do. You do? So you can, you can balance all of these talents. You can <laughs> sing and... <laughs> now, you, you've won a number of contests, and you have been slowly making a name for yourself in a genre of singing that is not really very common in this part of the world. Well, How did that come about? Yeah, well, I love soul music, blues, jazz, Motown, and R&B, classic R&B. I just love it. Um, it's just, it, it comes from um, Afro-American culture. Mm -hmm. And there's, the, the, the arrangements are, the musical arrange, arrangements are much more complex than pop music. And that's what I, I love about it. Mm -hmm. um, voices are really often used to imitate instruments, such as oh. saxophone and um, brass. Um, it's called scat scatting. Scatting. Scatting, yes. Mm -hmm. um, really often used in, in jazz music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. <laughs> you, love, <laughs> you love playing with your voice. Yes. <laughs> you must have to work very hard to keep your voice in shape in this cold, dry climate of ours. What do you yes. do? Well, obviously, during uh, winter time, the air is, is dry, so um, I have a humidifier. Okay. And um, I also use um, a nasal, nasal mist. Yeah. All right, that helps. And uh, of course, drink a lot, a lot of water. Yes. <laughs> Any different kinds of food that you're supposed to focus on or avoid? Well. Yes, um, dairy products, mm -hmm. tomatoes and citrus fruits um, should be avoided before, right before performing. Okay. Um, the citrus fruits um, prevent mucus uh, from forming other vocal cords. Therefore, it comes, it come back, it comes back twice as much. Um, so it's not really. Oh, good. I see. And, okay. Um, it gives a, a raspy voice, and people don't really like that, but I do. <laughs> I do, too. I, I do, so, yeah, but I'm still very careful on, on what I eat. All right. Well, you know, speaking of raspy voice, the first time I saw your video, I haven't heard you sing in person yet, but I, I can't wait. <laughs> um, I really couldn't help myself but think of, well, obviously you were singing a song by Nina Simone, but you sounded just like her, and you oh. even made me think about Janis Joplin. Thank you. <laughs> there's, there's something very unique to your voice. How did you, how did you transition to that from... Well, I, um, in 2012, mm -hmm. I had the amazing opportunity to, do, to participate in a Christmas tour with Mario Belcha and Nadja, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with Nadja's voice. Um, it almost sounds like a saxophone, you know, there's oh. uh, that little raspy thing and I love it so much. And then I, uh, I, I started to do my research about that, that music style that I just discovered and it was called soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just... And then what did you do to make that sound? Because I could love it until the cows come home, <laughs> but I wouldn't be able to make it. Well, I, I did a lot of research and okay. just, you know, um, tips from uh, coaches, vocal coach, vocal coaches, mm -hmm. and um, how to make that raspy sound like a... and bring that when, when I sing. <laughs> so you're suggesting that anybody could do it? <laughs> if we practice enough? Yeah, yeah, with a lot of practice, it, it, All right. it is possible, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, singing lessons are coming up. <laughs> um, all right, so you, Nadja was your influence, and from yes. there you went and did research. Now, research, yes. that's a very meticulous approach. That's not very common for young people to, yeah. to do that. You, you are very, you're meticulous. You're a perfectionist. You like to get things just right. What about, um, 
have to ask this because I know that people often make the association between mathematical geniuses and musical geniuses. Hmm. Are you, you probably have the makings of a, mathem of a musical <laughs> genius and does that extend to math? Well, I think, I, I would say it's more music, arts and languages. Okay. Because it uses this, the same side of the brain. All right. And, um, but writ written music, though, theory, is mm -hmm. more um, related to math. But I, I, I'm more... Uh, you're, you're more left brain, right? You're more right brain, you're more the creative kind yeah, and trying yeah. to figure out then, how to put the, the pieces math, together. Uh, all yeah. right, all right. Um, have you written any songs? No, I haven't. Well, uh, I would like to, mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm not just there yet. Um, okay. But I would like, I, I would love to. Oh, yeah. I have no doubt that you're going to do a great job. You, <laughs> you, you're so, it, it's, it's evident immediately as soon as anybody sees you perform that there's tremendous sensitivity and awareness of what's around you and even the styles that you've been able to pick up. So I'm sure that you'll look around you and just pick up stories from nature and people <laughs> and, but not from school, right? You're not so crazy about school. <laughs> not, not much. <laughs> not um, much. Uh, I don't know. There's something about my school environment that I don't, I don't really feel comfortable in it. Um, mm -hmm. I find it hard, quite hard to find um, common interests with people my age. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, uh, you know, in school you, you got to think, I, you can't really think out of the box like I usually do. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's a little bit harder for me. Well, you're a very creative person, so it's not something that they've encouraged too much in the standard curriculum. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to be in a special program for that. And hopefully, I guess you've got a special family, so you can already <laughs> be creative there. So most people your age, most young people, and certainly I would say for the last four years of your life at least, are in their adolescent years and they're, they're looking for something. They're looking for a way to express themselves, a way to find out who they are. And you seem to be a little bit ahead of the game. You've, you've found out exactly what it is that you love and hopefully you will be able to make a living out of it. So you, you are ahead of the game. You have this talent and you, with it goes a tremendous responsibility. So I guess my question here is, how do you, how do you fulfill that responsibility? How much of yourself do you dedicate to your art as opposed to being out there and having fun, being silly? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, singing is the master of my mind and my soul and whatever I'm doing, it's always there. And that's just what I want to do. And I, I want to do, I want to sing s like so bad. That's just what I want to do um, for a living. So, so I just want to work really hard to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I practice every day, but I don't keep track of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I practice until I'm satisfied, and I'm never really satisfied. Never so. really satisfied. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yeah, I just love it. I love everything that goes around, not just performing. You know, mm -hmm. performing is, is uh, the reason why people sing professionally, mm -hmm. and I just love it. I, I love to perform, but I also really like everything that goes around it, like all the work, and I, I just feel so good in, in that in that place, like in, in yeah. So there's both things. There's the practice at home. There's the singing. There's the the different approaches to interpreting the music that you you sing, and then there's the performance. Have you ever been nervous before a performance? Of course, all the time. Yes. Well, it's not nervous like, like it's, it's a good thing. You know, you, you want to do it and you're excited for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, yeah, I'm always nervous, but, but that's okay. And I think it, it's good to be nervous because if not, it's like you don't really care about what the, the public is going to think about your 
performance, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, so I think, I think it's a good thing. And what could possibly go wrong? So many things. So many things? <laughs> so many things. What could go wrong? You're, you're there in front of the audience. Yeah. Do you even know that the audience is there when you're performing? Yes, of course. Yes. It's the, a special moment, interacting with the, the public. And it's really intimate. It's very intimate. And you can feel the audience? You can feel their reaction? Yes. yes. <sighs> it's a very special moment. So you can feel their warmth and the energy that they give you. Now, is it different when you're performing in front of, uh, obviously it's different when you're performing in front of your family because for some reason families have a, are a different category of fish altogether <laughs> in any kind of environment. But if you've got a small group in a, in a school, in a hall, or a large auditorium, is there a different feeling? Yes, but mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I just want to sing and to, to give everything to yeah. the public. So. There could be like three people, three people, or thousands, and I, I. It's just, it's not this. It's not quite the same, but I, I love it in both ways. I just, I, I don't really mind. It's, I just want to sing. You know? <laughs> you know, it's amazing because I could sit here and ask you five hundred questions. And it doesn't really matter what I ask you because every answer that you give is just so charming and so much a reflection of who you are that I think the audience or the, the listeners are just enjoying listening to you just talk. Wait till they hear you sing. I want to know, I want to know what, what happens when your voice is not cooperating with you. Can you force it to perform? Can you force it to... You, do you adjust it to a lower range or a smaller range? Do you uh, know those things? Are you aware of those yes, things? Yes, okay. yes, I am, but it's, it's tough. And sometimes you have to perform. You have mm -hmm. to, to give a, a, a good show and you don't have a lot of voice or there's something wrong and, and you can feel it. There's a little bit more raspy in your voice than usual. Mm -hmm. than usual. And I just... I try to, to, to stay a little bit calmer with the, I, I don't do as much as the, Okay, like, all <laughs> right. I, I don't play as much around with, uh, I don't play around as much with my voice. Uh, okay. I keep it a little bit more calm, relaxed, and all right. simple. And who did you learn these things from? Practice. Practice, yes. Trial and error. A little bit of, of everyone can, can teach me something. Mm -hmm different um, coaches, different artists, different mm -hmm. musicians, different singers, different people. I just learn a little bit from everyone and okay. by myself as well. Okay. Now speaking of learning, you've got what, a year and a half, two years more of high school left? Yes, a, a, year, a year and a half. And a half. And a ha okay. So, and what comes after that? Is there some academy where you can go? Well, yeah. I, I don't really know. You don't know? <laughs> um, I guess in a in a way, I've been studying music for almost 10 years now, mm -hmm. and I plan on con continuing, but I don't You don't know? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so I guess the, the traditional way, uh, I mean, these days everybody goes on uh, America's Got Talent or the, so, the what is the it? The Voice. The Voice, yeah. and then they get themselves a coach. Uh, is that something that you might be willing to try? Well, I think you can, there's many, many and plenty of vocal coaches out there. So I don't yeah. think you, you have to go to something like The Voice, for, okay. example, for example, to, okay. to have a, a vocal coach. All right. So there are alternatives. You can yeah. just send an email to the, <laughs> the coach of your dreams <laughs> with a video. <laughs> So, if you had a choice, do you have any that would be at the top of your list? Ah, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. <laughs> of course. You would sound just like him. Yes, absolutely. He's, he's a musical genius and mm. yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. See, it takes a musical talent to appreciate to understand that because to me he just sounds great. I can't really appreciate <laughs> his talent. Uh, if it's not Stevie Wonder, is there a runner-up? You aim for the top. Uh, 
I don't know, Grégory Charles. Okay, who's he? I, um, sorry, I don't he's know. He's um, another musical genius. <laughs> another <there>. musical <laughs> <Yeah>. genius. <laughs> And the, the, but this sounds uh, a Canadian. He sounds like a Canadian yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. He lives in, uh, I think, uh, near Montreal. Okay. All right. Well, I hope the message gets to him somehow, because okay. obviously <laughs> we've got to we've got to support our youth, the, especially the ones who are trying so hard to be themselves. I have to mm -hmm. say, when I when I watch you, when I think when I hear your story, I think of a very you're, you're such a tiny little thing and you're so delicate but there's so much strength that comes from you and your strength mm -hmm. is not because I think you could lift all those big sound systems but your strength is because you've got the courage of your convictions mm. you're, you're, you're sticking with it you're going to do what it is that you know you're supposed to do it's like it's, there's a little voice always telling you Eloise, this is the way <laughs> <laughs> and I take it that as much as your, your parents and your family are an influence that you've got an even stronger one yeah, you. Yeah. Now, how many songs do you know? <laughs> how how long could you sing for if somebody uh, gave you a concert tomorrow? I don't know. Well, I would say... A few hundreds. A few hundreds? I'd say. I, I don't know. It's, it's tough. It's, it's a tough yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. So if, for instance, you appeared on the stage and somebody said, okay, sing for us, what would be your first choice? Hound Dog. Hound <laughs> Dog. <laughs> By uh, Big Mama Thornton. <laughs> That's, uh, That's the one that you really love, yeah. that you identify with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah obviously. <laughs> so when you, once it starts, I guess you can't stop. We have to be prepared to have an evening with Eloise that's going to be at least three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> and when you, when you get into that mode, I guess it, it must be very taxing on your voice too. Do you, ha do you have to worry if you're singing in an environment that's perhaps a little smoky and a little dry and not so right that the next day you're not going to be able to sing? Or yeah, the, yeah. I'm, I'm always worried. Yeah. Because, you know, vocal cords, you, you cannot just look at them and be like, oh, they're fine or they're not. You, know, you, you can't no. just look at them and, and know it. You, you feel something. Some, sometimes you, you can feel it, but it's, sometimes it, it can be just nothing. And you don't even notice what's going on. No. Yeah, but uh, I think... It's, I think I'm fine. <laughs> you think you're yeah, fine? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I remember the story I read about years ago with Céline Dion when she was interviewed and talking about how she was on tour and mm -hmm. whenever she walked into a hotel room she would have to turn on the shower and get humidity going yeah. through the room and how the hotels hated her for it because she used up all their hot water. I don't imagine it's much of a problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously you can't control the environment everywhere yeah. you go. Uh, I take it you don't smoke? No. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's probably not something that would be good for your voice, although it did some wonders for some of them. <laughs> now, if you get into this world of music, and it, it always makes me think of a little bit of danger, a little bit of risk. How, how are you going to stay away from all the trouble that mm -hmm. they, they all seem to get into when they're young? Tough question. Tough question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think. <laughs> I don't really know. You, know, you don't I, know I'm, I'm until really, you're. Well, you'll, yeah. you'll cross that bridge when you get there. Yeah. Well, don't you yeah. get into trouble, girl, because no. <laughs> everybody from here is going to come and get you. <laughs> and you know this one about. Um, you, you're going to have everybody in the village as your big brother and your big sister, and coming after you and making sure that nobody hurts you. <laughs> so. Speaking of village, now, Saint Pascal Bellon, is that where you grew up? Yeah. Yeah? You were born and raised here? Yeah. And here's this tiny little community with all of this wonderful music of Arcanson and all of these musicians that, is it your mom who's gathered them around? Is there something in the water? <laughs> <laughs> is there something that's unusual about this part of the world? Music um, is is my biggest passion, it, well, my only passion. Yeah. And um, 
also, I, it's... I, it's, what you like <laughs> to, it's what you like to do. Um, and yeah, donc c'est toujours été une passion pour toute la famille. Okay, it's a passion for the whole family, for, for so it brings family, everyone yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so do you guys just get together and spontaneously start singing? Sometimes. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, there, there's only always music in, in our house, so. Yes, <laughs> yeah. What's been holding you back from writing songs that are just Eloise? I've been trying to, mm -hmm. but I feel like maybe I don't have, I don't, I don't really know what to write about. It doesn't just come naturally. Okay. And I feel like I, I don't have the experience I might need to, right. to write a song or I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't come naturally, so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, someday it will. I, I expect it will. Everything comes in its own good time, yes. Do you read music? Do you know how to yes. read musical notes? Okay, so you could probably write down music that comes into your head. Mm -hmm. It'll come to you in a dream one of these days. <laughs> Do you, have you traveled around? Have you traveled around the world, different places? Not much. Mm. Um, maybe that, that also affects uh, that I, I, can, I can write, just, yeah. I expect many different musical influences and seeing people in different parts of the world and something's going to just trigger your heart. I have a friend, he, um, he was a diplomat many years ago, a Canadian diplomat, and he was in Peru. And he was sitting in a, in a cafe one evening and a little beggar child came up to him asking for money. And he was so moved by those little dark eyes staring up at him so hopefully that he wrote out a song called Somos Peru, We Are Peru. And it was, it became a hit in Peru, and they used it to raise money for the orphanages in Peru, which they have many of, which we don't have here. And sometimes it's something as simple as that, that just amazing moves you, mm. triggers, triggers something in your mind. You just never know. I expect that when the time comes, it's going to just flow forth because you'll, by then you'll have had so many, so many interviews and questions and people <laughs> <laughs> asking you who is Eloise and what is it that you want for this world. Is, you, you mentioned that when you perform you like, to, you like to interact with the audience. You like to bring joy to the audience, feelings. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when I don't imagine that it's ever happened that you've had a cold audience. I don't imagine anybody. It's it has happened? It has, yeah. Well, it's just like... <laughs> oh dear, how does that happen? It's just... The different. wrong environment. Yeah, I guess, it's yeah. just... And you know, my, the music uh, style that I, I like, soul and jazz, mm -hmm. not everybody likes it, but that's okay. It's, uh, that's okay, but it's just... Yeah. It, it's. It's really different from pop music or yeah. from what people usually listen to. Yes. There is a whole different persona that seems to go with what you have chosen as your style of music, or it has chosen you, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. And what's most popular today with all of the, um, the different states of makeup and undress and movements do you do you ever feel like you're going to have to move into that genre in order to get make a name for yourself? No, I, well, I, I, I hope I, I, I don't have to um, because that's not my style and it doesn't really go with with the style of music I want to do. No. And no, I, I don't want to go there. I, okay. No. Like I said, you know what you want. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Amazing. And you're not going to, um, how should I put it? Oh, I, I just see that one of these days you're going to come up with your own style of music altogether because that's just the way it works when you, when you blend your own, your own interests and your own talents and all the things that remain to influence you. So Eloise, 
In the meantime, until you develop your own musical style, do you, do you perform with your family? Besides, you mentioned that you sometimes do mu um, play the violin, but do you actually sing with Arcanson? Sometimes, yes. Okay. Yes. So you, you have a, a backup plan no matter what happens, because they're very popular in this part of the world, in this part of the country, I should say, Arcanson. Well, I guess, but you know, I just, I prefer to sing. Yes. Um, but anything about music is just, I'm just so passionate about, so. Okay. If I, I, if I could not sing anymore, I guess I would practice more my violin <laughs> or, or <laughs> piano or any other instruments, but um, I prefer to sing. You prefer to sing? <laughs> <laughs> So if there's a coach out here who's been as charmed by this young lady as we have been, then <laughs> make yourself known, please. <laughs> because uh, you, you haven't recorded that many um, videos yet on YouTube. There may be, I've found maybe four or five, if that many. A little bit more. More? Yeah. More, okay. But clearly your, your style has been evolving and no, we shouldn't be throwing you back into the mainstream or making it too hard for you. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh. It's been a total delight interviewing you and finding, most of all, I would say, finding a young person who is as committed and so and as natural as you are. You're, you're talented and you're, and you're sweet, and instead of being arrogant about it, you're just very passionate and wanting to share it. It's very refreshing. So I, I hope that the world is going to be kind to you and that your muses will be speaking loud and clear to you. And Saint Pascal Bailon and all of Clarence Rockland is going to be following you and hopefully seeing much more of you in the future. Oh, thank you. And thank you, and please take good care of yourself. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>